Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the ascension of our Lord and Savior, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We're glad that you have joined us this morning. Welcome to those who are watching on Channel 95 as well as those who are finding us on Facebook. We are glad that you are part of our worshiping community this morning. Uh, some announcements. Uh, if you take a deep breath, you can smell something good, which not often something we can say springtime in South Dakota, uh, but uh, burgers are uh, being prepared for a celebration following the service of our, uh, of our graduating young people. We invite you to stay to be a part of that. That'll take place uh, right downstairs in the uh, fellowship hall, uh, so please uh, join us. Um, if you look at our announcements, there are some uh, opportunities for worship, for service uh, upcoming. Uh, advance notice next uh, Sunday evening, uh, we will be having a combined uh, Memorial Day uh, service uh, with Harrison and other local churches. We invite you to come and uh, to be part uh, of that. Uh, VBS will be beginning on May 30th. There is still an opportunity to sign up to help out in some of the different areas. Uh, if I read the sign-up sheet right, there is a need for our day, I guess, is Wednesday. And so we need uh, some folks to sign up just to help out uh, in some of the classrooms and some of the activities. Uh, we encourage you to do that. It is an experience uh, that is to be enjoyed and also an opportunity to be of service to the kids of the community. As we turn to the, uh, the prayer concerns, uh, we continue to extend a prayer to the family of, uh, of Bernie Buechelman. Uh, there will be a prayer service uh, tonight at 6.30 uh, over at uh, Grace, and the visitation will be today from 5 to 7. Tomorrow, the uh, funeral services will be held beginning at uh, uh, 10.30. So please remember the family, asking that God would strengthen them and would grant them uh, the grace that they need and the hope to sustain them as they travel through this valley of shadows. Add uh, to your prayer list uh, Lucille Notaboom. She is currently uh, at the, uh, the Parkston Hospital. Uh, lift her up for prayers of strengthening and of grace. And you'll notice, lastly, uh, the Luke 15 uh, prayer list that we talked about last Sunday uh, is starting to come together. We already have a, a few names that have been shared. Uh, if you remember, the Luke 15 prayer list is a list where we pray for the prodigals of the church, sons and daughters uh, who have wandered away, some to a far country, some who really haven't left home that their hearts need to be moved to return to the Lord. And so we encourage you uh, just to give us their first name. Uh, we will uh, put it on the list. We don't need any more details other than the fact that you want us to pray uh, for these prodigals. And uh, we will have that list shortly uh, in the bulletin. We have come on this Ascension Day uh, to worship the one who is high and lifted up. So I invite you uh, to join with me with these words. Clap your hands, shout for joy. Our Lord reigns on the throne of glory. We open our hearts to the ascended Lord. Who sits on the throne of glory. Lord high and lifted up. Jesus who sits upon the right hand of the Father. Spirit poured out into the world today. We give you praise. We lift you high crying holy, holy, holy. We bend the knee and proclaim you sovereign and Lord. Receive today the worship of your people in anticipation of your coming again. May all that we say and do be to that praise, honor, and glory of your name. Amen. Let's unite our hearts as we sing together, we will glorify. <laughs>
mercy and peace. Receive these gifts of our ascended Lord and Savior. In his name we offer you peace.
ascended at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is our advocate. And so we can approach him confessing our sins together. O oh Lord, we have not lived our lives as kingdom people. We place our crowns on hopelessness, fear, and selfishness. We are ruled by our schedules and our need for control. We make kings of the things we acquire and queens of our immediate desires. We forget that your kingdom draws near to us on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us, we pray. Come, Lord, and open to us the gates of your kingdom. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. In the name of the reigning Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to God. The law of God from the Ten Commandments. You shall not commit adultery. Let us bring our offerings to the Lord.
It is always good to be reminded of the power of prayer, especially as we prepare to gather uh, before God in the congregational prayer. Uh, I always like when notes come my way uh, during the service, especially when they are, uh, are good news to report. And so we have a, a praise report to share before we go to prayer. Thanks be to God. Farland's nephew, Wiley, who we have been praying for, who has been awaiting a heart transplant, was given one today. So we praise God that all is going well. We will keep in prayer that this will be uh, quite literally a, uh, a new life for him uh, as he's on the road to recovery. Thus in courage, let us come to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in that good news. In a world of so much bad news, to see you at work, to see your power poured out in response to the prayers of your people. What a tremendous encouragement it is to come to you in prayer. For we know that you hear our prayer. Jesus has made that promise if we ask in his name, you will hear and you will answer. We may not always agree with the answer. We so often want the answer to be yes. Yet in your great wisdom, sometimes you tell us to wait. And other times you say no. I have something better for you. Give us the grace to accept your answers. And to recognize that you do all things well. That all things, the pain and the suffering, the delay, sometimes even the denial, works out for our good. May we have that eternal perspective that you do all things well. On this Ascension Sunday, we think of the words of Paul who reminds us to set our minds on things above. Not that we would become so heavenly minded, we are no earthly good. But that by seeking the things that are above, we may see what is and what will be. And we might become witnesses, ambassadors of the kingdom, that is soon and very soon coming for all to see. Lord, we thank you for that ascended perspective. We thank you for helping us to see that there is more to your plan than our limited part of it. Yet you remind us that in each small way, we contribute to the glory that is to come. And so, Lord, we work, we serve, we worship, and we pray not to gain your favor, not to, to make a heaven on earth, but to testify that our God reigns. Lord Jesus, high and lifted up, seated at the right hand of the Father, we give you thanks for your work of redemption, for the once for all sacrifice, complete and you sit in triumph, pouring out the Spirit into the church. In anticipation, we look to the celebration of Pentecost, where next Sunday remind us anew that we have been given power from on high to work for the kingdom to advance the cause of the gospel of the kingdom in every conversation in every interaction Lord we gather today standing on the promises that Jesus made promises that are even now being fulfilled in his death resurrection and ascension promises to be seen in their completeness when the archangel shouts and the trumpet sounds. Lord, help us not only to be standing on the promises, 
but walking by faith, following our good shepherd to the green, to the still waters, to the mountain tops, and even through the valley of shadows. Lord, we pray for those today who go through that valley. We pray for Bernie's family. We ask that you would be with Pat and the children, that you would surround them with comfort, that you would remind them of the hope that Bernie had, and give them a great anticipation of the reunion around your throne. We pray for those who are struggling, who the shadow of sickness has cast its pall over their lives. Lord, we pray for Lucille especially today, but Father, there are others. There are those struggling with short-term afflictions. There are those who are dealing with diagnoses of, of disease that has been with them and will continue to be with them. We pray for healing. We pray for strengthening. We rejoice that, that you have brought to Wiley a, a new heart. Father, we are grateful for one who was willing to, to donate to a family that was willing to share. Father, may we be reminded that we can serve one another in so many different ways by our living, but even sometimes in our dying. Lord, we pray for those who are set aside in our nursing homes. We pray for those who are shut in, those whose only access is through the TV or the internet. Lord, include them in the fellowship. Let them know that they are loved by you and that we love them as well. Be with those who are anxious and distressed today. Give to them the peace that passes understanding. To those who are struggling materially, relationally, emotionally, spiritually, draw near to their hearts and give them strength to win these battles. For the prodigals, Lord, who have won a far country, who live under our own roofs as elder brothers, we pray that you would soften their hearts that you would open their eyes to see the desperateness of their situation and remind them that they can come home, that they can return and find arms open, a welcome and a celebration. Father, our prayers today are too numerous for us to list, yet each one is heard by you. Each one is taken to your heart and answers are returned according to your will. So we thank you this day for the power of prayer and for your great love and mercy that stands behind that power. Mindful of what we have seen and experienced, we continue to pray for your people, for the church, taking Jesus' words as our own, as together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Word of God this morning, on this Ascension Sunday, comes from the book of Psalms. I invite you to turn to Psalm 110. Psalm 110, a psalm of David. This is God's Word for us. This morning, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion, saying, 
rule in the midst of your enemies. Your troops will be willing on your day of battle. Arrayed in holy splendor, your young men will come to you like dew from the morning's womb. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day of his wrath. He will judge the nations, heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth. He will drink from a brook along the way. And so he will lift his head high. May God bless his holy and inspired word this morning. Today is, as we said, uh, Ascension Sunday. It is not a particular uh, hallmark holiday. I don't believe you can go and find an Ascension uh, day card. Yet I believe that it is as important as the crucifixion, as important as the resurrection uh, of Jesus. And sadly in the church it is uh, off uh, neglected. Yet it is important for us to, to consider Jesus high and lifted up. Now when you turn to the Apostles' Creed, when you listen to these, these statements of faith, we share in the Apostles' Creed the words that, that He ascended to the right hand of the Father. Yet in the next breath, we say that He is coming again, from thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. There is this pause in between the activity of Jesus in the Apostles' Creed. And some, I, I've had children have asked, well, what does it mean that Jesus is ascended? And they say, well, it must mean that He's taking a vacation. He's, he's taking a break. Jesus worked so hard on earth, He's tired. Out of the mouths of, of babes. Yet what is Jesus doing now? What do we recognize? What do we celebrate? today on this Ascension Sunday. What is Jesus doing right now? Ascended beyond the cloud at the right hand of the Father. Is Jesus involved in His world? Is He involved in, in the church? Is He involved in your life? In mine? Well, Psalm 110 gives us an answer to that question, what is Jesus doing now? Psalm 110 is the most quoted Old Testament passage in the New. 27 times Jesus, the apostles, make notice of what the inspired word given to David means for the ministry and the ongoing work of Jesus. And so I invite you to join me as we look at, at Psalm 110. As we, as we look at some images of Jesus, we look at some actions of Jesus since He ascended to the Father in anticipation of the judgment that is to come. And I'm going to share just four images lifted uh, from Psalm 110. And, and the first image we find in verse number 1. The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand and I will make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Now the image that I want you to have is Jesus on the throne. Jesus in heaven on the throne. And that's a little bit easier to picture. Uh, in light of the coronation of, uh, uh, of King Charles. To think of the pomp and circumstance there in Westminster Abbey as, as he took his, his seat of, of power. Now imagine that writ large over all creation that Jesus now is seated at the right hand of the Father. Now we think of kings sitting upon thrones in that little private uh, chair. 
I've always wondered about the private chair of pastors. They're always kind of, kind of throne like. But imagine Jesus sitting in the presence of the Father, not upon this singular throne, but in the ancient world, in the eastern world, it was actually more like a couch. And the sovereign would sit, and he would invite those to, to sit with him to share in his power, to share in his rule. And so Psalm 110 gives us a glimpse of what took place beyond the cloud when the father welcomed his son who had sacrificed, who had paid the price, saying, come, sit with me. Share in my power, my glory, my honor. Share in the sovereignty that you gave up when you came into this wicked, sinful world. Rule with me over all of creation. That's one of the things that Jesus is doing. He is, is, is ruling over the world that he called into being. Over the world that he gave his life to redeem. Over the world that he will remake new when he comes again. Jesus is not sitting back letting the world now go through its rotation. He is actively involved. More so now that he is in heaven than even when he walked the earth. He who was master of the seas, of the wind, who had the very power of life and death in his hand, now has this universal sovereignty. And we praise him for that. Yet we live in a world where People don't like the idea of someone calling the shots. Prior to the coronation of, of King Charles, there were the anti monarchists who were saying, you know what, we don't want a king. We don't want Charles to, to be our king. And they were protesting. And there are people in this world who protest the fact that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. They shake their fists at heaven and say, I am in charge of my own life. I set the direction of my sails. No one can tell me what to do. I am in control. Now as much as they protest, as much as they raise their, their fists angrily to heaven, the truth is we are not in control. God is in control. Christ who sits upon the throne controls sovereignly the events of history and of our human lives. And all we have to do is look around at the chaos. All we have to do is to look at the rising crime and the violence and, and the hatred that, that uh, pollutes our television screens or uh, flashes across the headlines of our paper. We have done a pretty lousy job of being in control. When we have the power to, to direct our lives, we use it selfishly. We use it to, to oppress others, to, to lift ourselves up. We respond with violence, not love. This world is worse for the fact that we think we have any control at all. And so on this Ascension Sunday, we recognize Jesus high and lifted up, the sovereign over all things. And we admit, Lord, we can't control the situation. We cannot handle what is going on in this world. I, I was thinking about... Uh, when Robert was a, was a little kid, he used to listen to Kids Bop. And we listened to Kids Bop Country. And there was a song that Robert played on repeat. And it's a familiar song, probably some of you know by Carrie Underwood. And it was the song, Jesus Take the Wheel. And, and that imagery of, of realizing that, that our lives are spinning out of control, and only when Jesus takes control are we going to find any peace. And so in a world that is spinning on ice, how important it is for us who believe to say, Jesus, you know, take control. I can't make my life work. There are things beyond anything I can do to change. Jesus, you are control. You rule everything wisely, gracefully. Rule my life as well. Because the throne that I have foolishly set upon has always belonged to you. And when you recognize that Jesus is on the throne, you're going to find a peace that passes understanding. One image of Jesus. Because he is on the throne, you and I have peace in the chaos. There's a second image found in, in, in the next two verses. 
uh, of that uh, of that psalm it says the Lord extend your mighty scepter from Zion saying rule in the midst of your enemies your troops will be willing on your day of battle arrayed in holy splendor your young men will come to you like dew from the morning's womb now just because Jesus is on the throne just because Jesus is, is, is ruling sovereignly over all creation, does that mean he is localized in heaven? Of course not. This uh, couple of verses reminds us that not only is Jesus on the throne, but Jesus is also on the march. And we have this imagery of the, of the armies of the Lord advancing in battle. For he is the, the conquering King. He is moving his plan, his purposes forward. And, and I love this imagery. It says that he is doing this and he is advancing in the very midst of the enemy. Now one of the, the great battles that I, have, that I have fought in understanding the word of God has to do with what did Jesus mean when he said to the disciples, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And you've heard me talk about this, but I think it bears repeating. Now I have friends, I have very erudite friends. I have one friend that I have carried on a conversation with for a number of years because he firmly believes that what Jesus was saying is church Hold out against the world. Church, God's going to take care of you. Don't you worry about the devil getting into the church. And he said, that's, I, don't, I don't think that's what Jesus is saying. I don't think Jesus is, is offering us a defensive promise. I don't think Jesus is saying, hunker in your bunker until I come again. I think these words found in, in Psalm 110 say exactly the opposite. It is not the church that ought to live in fear that the devil might get in. It's the devil that is living in fear because he knows that his gates are coming down. When Jesus says the gates of hell will not prevail, Jesus says that I am coming in victory. I am advancing. Your Satan Strongholds are falling. The forces of, of evil are in retreat. And the church ought not be to, to be living in fear. Because when it says that, that, that Jesus is, is ruling in the midst of his enemies, that means he is ruling in the midst of our enemies as well. For the enemies of Christ are the enemies of, of the Christian. Yet he is advancing from victory to victory. And so we ought not to be afraid. In fact, we need to be advancing with him. It talks about this, this, this willing army that is following the Lord into battle. Assured of victory. Assured of triumph. And so we ought not to be afraid to share the gospel. We ought not to be afraid of, of, of government regulation or, or, or persecution. Because those gates will not stand before the power of the gospel. Jesus is on the march. We are to march with him unafraid. Because he is king of kings and lord of lords and hell is in retreat. Jesus is on the march. Don't be afraid to march with him. It's a third image that's found in verse number four. David says, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is this mystery uh, figure uh, in the Old Testament who appears uh, to, to Abraham at the time of victory. And there's a lot that to be unpacked in Melchizedek. Uh, if I never get around to preaching a sermon, read the book of Hebrews. makes it a lot clearer. But what you need to know about, about this verse is it's talking about the priesthood that Jesus has. 
And that's really what the book of Hebrews is about. Is not only is he king of kings and lord of lords, but he is our great high priest. Like Melchizedek, mysterious with no beginning, no apparent end, who is worthy of the uh, offerings and the sacrifices of God's people. But what is a priest? Well, a priest, quite simply, is someone who stands between God and man. They are the bridge, they are the, the connector. They, they plead man's cause to God. That's what the Old Testament uh, priest did. And Jesus, of course, is the great high priest. He is there at the right hand of God. Having once given the sacrifice of his blood, he has access to the Father to plead his wounds, to plead his sacrifice. For who? For you and for me. And so this, this, this third image that I want you to have is not only Jesus on the throne, Jesus on the march, but, but Jesus on our side. He is our great advocate. Greater than, than anyone who will defend a celebrity or will argue before the Supreme Court. Jesus pleads for us. And through his shed blood, Scripture says, we can boldly come to the throne of grace. We can ask in his name whatever. Because he has promised that the Father will hear us. That's what Jesus is doing. Every time that, that you are praying, Jesus is pleading your prayer. Through the Spirit, He is taking our unintelligible words sometimes, the fearful words, the sorrowing words, and He's, he's, he's making them clear to the Father. And Jesus is saying, Father, hear them. Bless them, not because they are worthy, because they have done anything that merits this, but because I, your son, have given my life for them. I mean, imagine Jesus pleading our case. Our innocence is guaranteed through the sacrifice of his blood. He who is the son of the father has his ear, has his heart. Never forget that Jesus is on your side. So many people picture God as kind of this fierce, grumpy old man. They really need to understand that, that it's the face of Jesus that shows the face of the Father, and it is one of love and compassion. He is your advocate. He is your, your, your pleader. He is your uh, friend with the Father. And so come boldly. Ask big things. You know, sometimes our prayers are, are tiny. Pray big prayers because Jesus is the great high priest. He is on your side. And he is on mine. The, the fourth image of, of the ascended Lord we, we find in these latter verses 5 uh, through 7. And they are interesting verses. The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day of his wrath. He will judge the nations, heaping up the dead and crushing the rulers of the whole earth. I mean, that is some powerful, scary imagery of Jesus. But that's not the image of Jesus I want you to see. Not Jesus coming in wrath, coming in judgment coming in justice. He is all those things and more. But it's the last verse that provides one of the greatest images of our ascended Lord. It says, He will drink from a brook along the way, and so He will lift His head high. What in the world is that image? What in the world do we learn about Jesus by this image of a, of a conquering king kneeling down and having a drink and throwing His head back? Well, the kings of the ancient day, to, to verify their victory, to, to solidify their triumph, would, in the midst of enemy territory, go to a stream and would go to a river. And peacefully they would kneel and they would drink of the waters of the conquered enemy. And they would throw back their head in triumph and they would cry out victory. 
In fact, sometimes in the Roman world, they would cry out, it is finished. The battle is over. And that was a sign to the troops that they were going to return now in victory. That they were going to bring the spoils of winning the battles. And this is the last imagery of Jesus here in Psalm 110. It is of the, the victorious king. Victory has been won. And now it's time to have the triumph. The parade of, of victory. What is Jesus doing? He is getting ready to return. At the right hand of the Father, he has been advancing the cause of the gospel. He has been leading his church. He has been ruling over all things in preparation for the day in which he would return. To bring with him a new heaven and new earth. The last image I want you to have of Jesus is the fact that Jesus is on his way. Jesus is coming again. In the book of Acts, what are the, you know, what's the angel say to the disciples as they're looking up into heaven? This Jesus whom you saw go into heaven in the same way he will come again. Jesus behind the cloud is preparing a place for us, John says. And if I prepare a place for you, what does it say? I am coming back. And we live in anticipation of that great return. When the trumpet will sound and the king will come to bring us home. Coming in. Imagine that scene. Imagine what it would be like. Jesus at the head of the armies. The willing soldiers. The great reunion that's going to take place. When loved ones whom we have lost in this world will be found again in eternity. That great reunion of grace to be in the presence of the Lord forever. And Jesus talked all the time about his return. I'm going away, but don't worry. I'm coming back. And what I bring with him will be greater than anything that you can imagine. Yet he asked the question, will you be ready? Will you be ready when he returns? Jesus asked the question, will I find faith on this earth? And those of us who know him, need to think about that question as well. Jesus is coming back. The King is coming. Will you and I be ready? There's four images. Jesus is on the throne. Jesus is on the march. Jesus is on our side. Jesus is on his way. Well, what does that mean? Are those just things we put in our pocket keep for another day or is something more required of us on this Ascension Sunday, the year of our Lord, 2023. Well, David, in writing Psalm 110, really is laying out two more images. Now, these are not images of Jesus, sovereign, and advocate, and, and conqueror, and returning king. See, we could include it in the story as well. It's a little hard, but if you, if you dig deep, you see that there are two contrasting images of man found in Psalm 110. And they are images that call us to make a decision, to respond There's two images to be found of humanity. There is those who are unwilling and those who are willing. Those who are unwilling are those who insist upon their own way, to insist that they and they alone control their lives, that they have no time for an interfering God, that they do not believe that God has any say in their lives. They are going to live out of their own strength, and they will, according to Psalm 110, be crushed. Yet hidden within the words of verse 3, this image of the conquering king, it talks about those who are willing. Those who are part of that holy array of splendor. Those who have said, Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you 
are my king. And I want to willingly serve you, to follow you. Those will be exalted in that day of victory. When the king comes to reward the faithful, he will reward those who are willing to serve him now. I think you always ought to put Psalm 110 next to Philippians 2. Because Philippians 2 speaks of the king. And it says that there is coming a time when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's coming a day when all will bow. All will recognize his sovereignty. All will recognize his power, his majesty. But the question is, willing or unwilling? Oftentimes I think of that moment when Jesus comes again. Those people who have lived in rebellion of hardness of hearts with their stiff necks. Who they will behold Jesus in all his glory. And they will still rebel. And in an earlier psalm it says that those who are rebellious to the Lord will have their knees broken with an iron rod. Now that is a powerful image. If you will not bow to Jesus in this world, he will make you bow in the next. If you are unwilling to serve him today, he will humble you tomorrow. But the good news is, we have a choice. The good news is we can proclaim him Lord of our lives right now. We can say, Lord, take back your throne. Reign in glory and majesty. Be my advocate. Be my conquering king. Be the sovereign of all things. And I wait for you to return that you might be my all in all. So you have a choice today on this Ascension Sunday. I will ask you these questions. If Jesus is on the throne, are you worshiping him as king? If Jesus is on the march, have you enlisted in his army? If Jesus is truly on your side, are you seeking his grace daily? And if he is on his way, are you ready? You see, today's the day of choice because tomorrow that choice may be taken away. Today you might willingly submit to the sovereign of your heart. Tomorrow you may be put upon your knees for all eternity. So I offer this advice. Honor the king. Bless the king. Serve the king. Let us pray. Father, we acknowledge that you have made this world the footstool for your Son. At your right hand, through the Spirit, he is reigning with power and majesty undeniable, except to those who will not see. Father, you have said that there is coming a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Father, when that day comes, the choices that we make in this world will have been set. Father, may we be among those who willingly, excitedly serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who advance the cause of Christ in this world, and who one day at His return will spend eternity with you in glory. Father, take control of our hearts. Take us from a place that is not rightfully ours to sit. And Lord Jesus, reign with us to your praise, honor, and glory. We are going to uh, conclude by celebrating in song the Lordship of our King. Stand and lift your voices. Rejoice, the Lord is King.
is always a blessing when uh, former pastors and their families come back to check up on the flock that they had led. It is our great pleasure to have with us uh, Pastor Rahoof, who 50 years ago, if I heard correctly, uh, was in this place. Some of you younger folks, you may not remember, but a lot of you do. And we have invited him uh, to, to share a few words and to bring us the benediction this morning. Thank you, Pastor Scott. Uh, wow. <laughs> Thank you for your message, by the way. Wonderful message for Ascension Day. Yes, 50 years ago, um, I was examined for the ministry, just fresh out of seminary in Inwood, Iowa. Then we made our way here because the Corsica Christian Reformed Church had extended a call, dared to call us, Ruth and me. We came here with our oldest daughter, Lynn, and we had two more kids while we were here, Paul and uh, Rachel, and then we moved on. Um, and we were traveling from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where our son lives, and heading back to Pella, Iowa, where we now live. And Ruth and I said to each other, let's stop in Corsica on Sunday. Let's sneak into church and just worship with you. Well, we couldn't sneak in. Um, there were Dennis and Jackie at the doors greeting us and others that we met then as we came in. And it's been a wonderful little experience to be with you. Uh, we're going to travel on. Ruth and I spent most of our ministry in Redlands, California. And we now have four kids. Ruth will be happy to talk with you about that. We're thinking we'll stay for dinner. I'm smelling the hamburgers, so I'm not going to say much more. But I just want to extend to you uh, this final benediction. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to smile upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.